Welcome to My Back Roads Life. I'm Chef Jan, and my special guest tonight is Tammy Wenzel. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. I hate to tell y'all this, but I've been waiting here for y'all so long till I had to get started. I was like, where's everybody at? So I just had to put the onions on the griddle. Sorry, guys. I don't know where y'all been. Where you been? Um, I see... I, we need that mirror from <laughs> Romper Room. You know, that's what we need. Yeah. That You remember that mirror? Yep. I keep telling production to get me that. But, <laughs> but Okay, so we have Barbara, sis. Yay, you're here. Peggy. Hi, Mom. Yes, this is Peggy. That's, that's Tammy's mama. Uh, 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 back roads. Conf ah, yeah, Mich uh, Shelly's here. Kim, hey. Kim's here. Emily. Paula. Hey, Paula. Tanya. Gosh, we're so glad to see y'all here. Susie. Hey, Susie. Um, as y'all know, we're, we're, we're talking about homeschooling tonight because Tammy here has been homeschooling, I think, since the beginning of dirt. <laughs> Feels like it. Was it? Was it? Yeah, it yeah. was. It was Close. before. Was it before dirt or after dirt? <laughs> Probably after. Yeah. After right after right after dirt was when she started homeschooling. Go figure. But no, she's got she's got it going on with homeschooling. So hey, Janie. Uh, yeah, Karen is there. Janie's there. Hey, Karen. Hey, Ke hey, Janie. Uh, I see. I see my little Helen. Yes, I see little Helen. Um. But what we're doing tonight, we're going to do a combination. She's going to talk about homeschooling, and I'm going to make something super duper special for you guys. Now, once upon a time, once upon a time, uh, our children was all little. It was a long time ago. I don't see any of them on here yet. So, uh, hey, Lori, Lori Peterson, first time here. Hey, girl. Um, so, I would make. I would bake bread on Mondays and Fridays. I'd always bake a batch of bread so that when the kids got off the bus, it was like they would kill each other trying to get to the house because they smelled the bread when they got off the bus. So each one of the kids would get a loaf of bread and a stick of butter, and they was good. That was they was good. So tonight we've got we've got some bread baked. We have some bread baked. We've got a lot of bread baked. And what we're going to do with this bread, we're going to make my ultimate grilled cheese sandwich. And to go along with that ultimate grilled cheese sandwich, we're going to make, we've got some made from scratch. And I tell you, made from scratch, tomato soup, cream of tomato soup. You guys don't want to miss this. So what I'd like to do right now is, is, uh, how about my my welcome wagon team? Are they are they out here? I know I know I see Shelly, I see Barbara. So I guess that is exactly who my welcome wagon team is. So I want to introduce you guys to my welcome wagon team. And Barbara and Shelly have helped me out. They're 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 in the comments. They're watching the comments. They're they're going to welcome y'all. They're going to. Uh, 
if, if there's anything that you need to know that I don't catch, then they're going to catch it for me and they're going to answer the questions. Um, Susie, I'm sorry you're hungry, baby. I'm sorry. You need to come to Oklahoma. I done told you that twice today. You need to come on to Oklahoma. Uh, hey, Dina. Hey, girl. Dina's, Dina's my girl. She's the one that designed my mason jar logo. We also have another project going on, don't we, Dina? But I'm not going to say nothing about it right now, even though I want to, but I'm not going to. Uh, Lisa, is this your first time watching? Lisa Rand, is that, is that right? First time watching? Good. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Emily's here. Helen is, yeah, Helen's right back here, Emily. Don't you worry. Helen's right back here. Uh, she's, she's, hand, there she is. She's handling all of our tech support tonight. Um, she's keeping us straightened out. So what we're going to do, we're going to start, we're, we're going to start talking about homeschooling while I'm cooking my onions and while everybody's shedding a tear since I'm cooking onions. Um, Tammy, why don't you tell us what is homeschooling? Okay. So homeschooling is when you have decided that you're going to remove your child from the public school system. And I say from the system because public schools nowadays do have the option of doing school at home. My grandson happens to be enrolled on public school online. That is not the same as being homeschooled. You're still under all the same regulations and all the same um, rules and, and all that as, as uh, the public school kids who go to a brick and mortar school. So homeschooling means you've taken that responsibility away from the public school and you're going to do this on your own. Wow. Wow. So, so all of this is, is legal and all, all of these things, right? In the United States, all 50 states, you can homeschool. I do recommend that you check out um, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. Um, they have a website and you can actually go on there and they will tell you what laws you need to follow. Um, every state is different. They'll just they'll tell you like the number of days you have to homeschool, um, if there's certain subjects you need to cover. They will tell you whether you have to do state testing, any of those things. Um, so that's a really great resource. But it is legal in all 50 states. And you said you had a friend down in um, Australia, right? Australia. So I was curious. So I Googled, and down in Australia, it's legal too. You do have to register there. And they're a lot similar to the United States that each um, state of Providence has their own rules you have to go by. So you just need to uh, check with your state board and re ask them what your regulations are for the area you live in. Helen Morrison, are you here yet, darling? She's my girl from Australia that was really asking. I'm checking the, the comments. Is she here? Okay, good. Helen, uh, yeah, Tammy was, Tammy was wanting to, uh, she, she did a lot of research for you. So, if, if, and, and I want to say now, if you, um, if you have any questions, we're going to be we're going to, we're going to get through the interview and then as soon as Tam, we're done with the interview Tammy's going to take your questions and uh, so just jot them down and make sure you've got them so that we can uh, Tam, Tammy can answer all the homeschool questions if you want to know what kind of onions I got that's different <laughs> I can answer that one okay but um so um how long have you homeschooled, Tammy? I know I said, I know what I said about dirt, but, you know, I was just kidding on that one. Not so. quite that old. Okay, so, yeah. Um, I've been homeschooling about 18 years. Um, wow. I've homeschooled about eight, no, about 10 kids. Some of mine, some weren't mine. Um, so that brings up, we fostered for a long time. We are no longer a foster home. In the state of Oklahoma, it is legal to homeschool a foster child. So we have homeschooled a foster child once for... Wonderful. Um, certain reasons uh we've thought we have helped homeschool some friends kids before when they needed help getting over hurdles and um our let's see our seven youngest have had some homeschooling of some sort our oldest two were never in homeschooling our next oldest two were homeschooled until sixth grade and then our next our oldest son joey he's 18 he graduated from homeschooling last year awesome that yeah. is awesome and so well, so homeschoolers can go to college and all that, right? They can. Each college has different rules and regulations. So if there's a specific college you want to get into, I would check out, um, go to them, talk to them, and ask what they require before you start your high school years. You know, so in junior high, some require, all of them require transcripts. You need to keep accurate records of everything and your tests. They, um, 
you usually just have to take the test to get in like anyone else, and that's it. You don't have to have, most colleges, you do not have to have an accredited diploma necessarily. Oh, wow. Okay, I, you know, I had no idea about that. Um, so, homeschooling, what are, what are the pros and what are the cons? Because, you know, right now we're, we're in an, an, a time in our country Mm -hmm. We're not going to get into politics, okay? But we are in a time in our country that there's a lot of questions about home. Right. What's the pros? What's the cons? You know? Right. Well, I definitely don't suggest pulling your kid out because you just you just recently got scared because of media hype and what's going on in the media. Yeah. Because homeschooling is a very long, hard, grueling process. It's not like we wake up every day cheery and happy to see each other. <laughs> you know, we are not a perfect family by any means, and there are days when it's not easy. So homeschooling needs to be taken um, very serious before you make that decision. Yeah. You know, what are your reasons why? Is it, you know, it could be simple things like you want a Christian-based curriculum. It could be you want a very high academic program. Um, it may be that you want your kids to be able to learn at his or her own pace. Mm -hmm. Whatever your reason, you need to take time with your spouse to sit down, really think about what reasons you would have for homeschooling. Mm. I would then suggest you do the opposite. Think of reasons why you wouldn't want to homeschool. They're real. They're out there. Let's be honest. Yeah. Do I want to be with my kids 24 hours a day, seven oh, days a week? Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. let's be real. Oh. This is a big commitment, you know? Yeah, it is. Uh, and so, you know, just really think about that and the cons of, like, you know, obviously when are you going to have to stay home? You can't, I mean... I am blessed to be able to work because I work a seasonal job, so I only work when my kid, um, when the school season's pretty much out. So I'm really e able to work outside my home and homeschool, but most people don't have that option. So you really, I mean, there are a few people who homeschool and work full time, but that is really, really tiring and hard on you and your kids. So you really need to take this time to go over this and see what financial aspects, the spiritual aspects, and just emotionally what you and your kids want to do. Kim Spencer, she says that she loves this topic. Her boys have never been in the school system. Awesome. She's a, a, a dear friend of mine from Mississippi. So, yeah, Kim. So you can get real, can't it, Kim? <laughs> yeah, Kim, yeah. I tell you what, uh, it, it, it's got to be a huge commitment. I mean, yes. but at the same time... The Look at the, revol the rewards. Yes. Yeah. The benefits are amazing. There's nothing more exciting than seeing your kids light face light up when they finally get whatever it is Ex you've oh, been wanting to man. teach. I mean, yeah. my heart just melts. I love it. Yeah, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about yeah. that. Or yeah. like when they finally, like my goal is to teach my children to want to love to learn. So when they finally start catching on that they don't have to have me walk them through everything to learn and they go so find a subject on their own and research it and come tell me about it, that is just amazing. Oh my and goodness. And it carries on. Oh my 18-year-old son to this day still does the same thing. He comes home and he shows me things or he tells me about things that he's learning or he's like, hey, I want to learn about this. It's like yeah. it, it never dies. Right. So and I would like to throw out when I homeschooled my first set of kids um, when they were little, my husband worked a nighttime job. If my kids were in public school, they would literally have never seen their dad. I mean, maybe one day a week. So with oh, our wow. homeschooling, we didn't homeschool traditional hours. When he went in around four, that's when we broke out the books. Mm -hmm. So in the mornings, we were a family. That was our evening time, there you go. our family time. And then we homeschooled in the evenings. Yeah. And that's just a wonderful benefit of homeschooling. Yeah. So, but I mean, let's be realistic. Is it for everyone? No, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, you know, if you try it and you feel like it's not for your family, don't be afraid to reconsider yeah. other options, you know. And maybe it's public school online at home, or maybe it's a private school or a, or a public school. But I think God, if you're a Christian, God will really help direct you in that Amen. steps and tell you where you need to go. Amen. And, um, but no, it's definitely not for everyone. So I wouldn't beat yourself up if you feel like everyone around you is homeschooling and you're not. That's okay. Everyone's called to a different ministry. Everyone's called to a different walk in life. Mm -hmm. You don't have to ma match up to anyone else. So what usually makes or breaks effective homeschooling? The biggest thing I see is you've got to guard your time. Once people figure out you're a stay-at-home mom and your kids are available all the time, 
the foe will not stop. Mm, doggies, yeah. <laughs> they think, oh, and we do like doing learning adventures with friends and family, but they can't be every day. They can't be every week. Um, we can't go to the store every time you need help for something. You really have to guard that time. <coughs> so Janie says that these onions is making her eyes water. Honey, you ought to be standing right here. They've cleaned out our sinuses. <laughs> it's just, so wonderful. Hey, there's Kayla. I bet that's my Aria. Hey, baby. She's saying, hey, Tutu. That's my grandbaby right there. Okay, so... So <laughs> Shelly says that she homeschooled Larry from sixth grade to graduation. That's awesome, Shelly. That's great. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Carolyn Tate is saying a pro to homeschooling for us has been independent study. <coughs> we discovered our daughter is gifted in math. <coughs> a con is the self-discipline required. Enormous self-discipline. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, self-discipline is a big deal, but your self-discipline doesn't have to be what everybody else's is. I recently read an article on Facebook, ironically, about a family who says, we don't get up early, and that's okay. And um, <clears throat> generally speaking, we don't either. We get up around 8, start school about 10. So don't feel the need or the pressure to get up at 6 or 7 to homeschool at 8. Just be consistent. Find out what times you need to do it and consistently do it. It's consistent days, consistent times. So yeah, it's very, that's very, very hard. You very gotta be disciplined no matter how much those kids whine or cry or whatever, you gotta get it done. Shoot, I'd be the one whining and crying. <laughs> Sometimes <Wait> that's true. <laughs> I see my son, Caleb. Hey, son, look what I'm making. Do you, do, hey, look at, look at this, Caleb. Remember the bread? Yeah. Uh, hey, Jonna, you made it. That's my, my high school friend from from Florida, she made it too. Well, good, Jonna. I want you. I, if y'all missed it, this is Tammy. <laughs> she is telling us all about homeschooling. So, Tammy, let's talk about your re the resources. There are so many resources. Um, even since just I started homeschooling, when I first started homeschooling, we kind of had a Becca, <clears throat> Christian Liberty Press, and basically public school books, the library. But now it's unlimited. Um, I would recommend going to a homeschool convention. Most states have them. In Oklahoma, you can check out the OCHEC website. Their, um, their convention's May this year, I think 4th and 5th. But if you go to that website, you can check it out. Um, and you will see all kinds of vendors there. And they will have all kinds of workshops from everything you can imagine. And it's just, it is truly worth the time to go there and really, you know, Fill out all the different kind of type of curriculums and different ways of teaching your children, and you can run into lots of parents who can guide you and direct you probably with any question you could have. A lot of them have mentoring stations, and that's just really the best place to start. Yeah. And also read the book, The Well Trained Mind. That is something I think every homeschooler should read. There it is, right there on the screen, folks. The Well Trained <clears throat> Mind. You might want to look at what's that? Is that something they can pick up on Amazon? They can't pick it up on Amazon. Audible has it. Um, it's a great book. I listen to it on Audible because I'm busy a lot of time, and so driving right. is a lot of the time when I read books or right. listen to books. <laughs> or if you're like me and you open a book to read it and fall straight to sleep, that's the best thing to make me go to sleep is open up a book. <laughs> but if I'm listening to it, that's a completely different thing. Yeah, so, okay, so. And we personally like classical <laughs> conversations. Um, we have our kids in this. It's uh, just one of the many wonderful programs, but it is based on um, classical learning. So that website will be available for you, too. I see my son-in-law, Ryan. He's joined us. Hey, Ryan, how are you doing? Good to have you here, son. Um, let's see. Anybody got something to say there? Yeah, Caleb, you remember the bread, don't you, buddy? Yes, you do. Okay, and uh, Carolyn says that in the beginning I was told not to overthink and overdo, and but it, yeah. Yeah, it's really, we all do it at some point and you get all excited. You find a website with lots of worksheets and they're free and next thing you know you have tons of worksheets all over and you're super excited and then you realize there's no way I'm going to use all these worksheets. Yeah, And really. so you wasted a lot of time and money and the same with curriculum. 
So lots of times what I suggest is, unless the curriculum is just absolutely no way you can finish the year with it, go ahead and finish out your year with your math book. It's not going to kill either one of you. Perseverance is a great quality to learn. And then next year, find a new curriculum. Don't just sit there and try to constantly switch around curriculums all the time. It's going to drive you nuts. Yeah, I was fixing to say that would kind of get a little... Man, that messed with my mind. For, right. For and there's so much good out there, so it's so hard. But stick with one for the year and then try something else. Okay. She, uh, Carolyn says that we use Coach Co-op in Norman. Yes. Is that? It is. She's been telling me about this. It's a, uh, They offer different classes that you can enroll in. Um, Carolyn, what church is that at? Is there a way that you can let us know the information on how to, how to get um, a hold of them for the people? that you get to individual it's individual classes so you don't go and just do all the classes you pick what classes you want and i think they have like sewing and math and science and different things like that i believe they even at one point did like a, a food one where they made food wow. from like different places around the world and things like that goodness gracious i like the food one <laughs> i like the food one yeah i can uh, i uh, i can become one with the food one um Thank you, Ryan. I got some onions on the grill, son. We're mm. fixing to put some... Ryan, do you see this bread right here, son? Do you see this bread? Well, there's like one, two, three, four, five more loaves sitting here. This is what I used to fix for my family. Yeah. Mm. See, Ryan? See what kind of family you done married into? Okay, so... Um, conventions in our area or other areas, mm. what, what's up with that? Well, like I said, I, knew, I do know we have the one here made by Ocheck. And then there's one in Texas called the Great Texas Convention. But I would just um, Google, once you get decide to homeschool, start Googling your area, your state you're in, and you will probably find other organizations for each state. I doubt there's any that don't have something close by. Yeah. It's pretty popular nowadays. So. Um, I, I really think that homeschooling, Homeschooling is something that, number one, it takes commitment. But I think, I mean, I think that, that they get an excellent learning. I mean, the, the, the whole, with the curriculum, and I think that they're, they're, the homeschooling kids that I have been around, um, man, I tell you what, they're smart. They are, yeah. They're, they're just <laughs> downright smart and i think a lot of that is because they get one-on-one -on -one. i mean they're always getting one-on-one -on -one. even though i have multiple children in different ages their schoolwork is one-on-one -on -one. they're not all in the same class they're not all in the same workbooks or anything like that so everything's taught pretty much one-on-one -on -one with them and as they get a little older they can do a lot of it on their own but they still if they get stuck need help they're getting that one-on-one -on -one. right and there's less distractions i mean and they can't not turn in assignment. Y'all have any kids like that in public school? We've had a few that in public school, they'd do their work, but they wouldn't turn it in or something like that. Well, yeah. homeschooling, you know, that's not an option. They're going to have to do their work. The class isn't going to move on without them. So therefore, they're really truly learning that material. What, what age do you start with the homeschooling? Um, we personally start around three. Um, my four-year-old Daxon's learning to read this year. He'll probably be reading by the end of the school year. Oh my goodness, that's, yeah. that's, I mean, that's just amazing. But not everyone's like that. Um, you know, I have another child who didn't read. I didn't know if he'd ever read. And then <laughs> he was like um, probably 14 before he really started reading. And so, I mean, each kid's different, but that didn't stop his learning because he couldn't read very well. He had so many resources at his tips that he could just read, he could just learn and learn. I remember people coming up going, I had no idea he couldn't read very well because he's so smart. He's so intelligent. And I was like, well, yeah, because his school didn't stop because that was his weak point. We kept schooling. We kept learning. We kept giving it to him different right, ways. Um, and now he's the one who graduated this last year. So he's, he's good to go now. That's awesome. That is awesome. I'm so, I tell you what, you're a wealth of knowledge. Really. This, I, well, I mean, you've been doing it since dirt. Dirt. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it again, but since she said it. I didn't say it that time. She did. I look good for looking at the dirt, huh? Yeah. Okay. Jeannie says she spent 18 years in public school system working with special needs children. I think homeschooling is going to become more important mm -hmm. with all the trouble in schools now. Jeannie, I, I, I have to agree with you. I really have mm -hmm. to agree with you because there's just so much going on. Um, 
Definitely. Yeah, well, Ryan, I can tell you where you can get some of that honey. It's Oklahoma. Oklahoma. But okay. you better hurry. But you better <laughs> hurry because it's fixing to be gone. Okay. So let's see. Has anybody got some questions? Let's see. Uh, la, la, da, da. Public school isn't what it used to be. Isn't that right, Janie? It, it's not. It's not what it used to be. It wasn't what when when I was in school, which was before dirt. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's not what it used to be. Um, but now at, at the same time, and there might. Um, Peggy says she is not old as dirt. <laughs> Just because you don't want to be old too, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is getting good now, Lord, Lord. Okay, so Mama's on there, and now your daughter here. Lord, have mercy. This is gonna get good. But um, uh, I lost my train of thought just then. So we're just keeping it real, folks. We're just keeping it real. I got onions just everywhere. So um, anybody got some questions? How was how has homeschooling changed from when you first mm. began? That's a good question. Um, when I first began, there was less resources. Um, we stayed in the house pretty much if it was school hours because people were, would question us, wonder what's going on, even though it was legal. It did cause a lot of um, questions and just intrusion into our normal family life and home. Nowadays, I can take my kids anywhere and no one even questions. It's just, it's so popular, it's everywhere. I should say, no, occasionally we still get addressed, but it's very rare. And so there's a lot more protection for homeschoolers now. There's a lot more resources. And by resources, not just curriculum, activities. I haven't even touched on that yet. But in Oklahoma, we have every sport you can think of for homeschoolers. Competitive, oh, all yeah. the way up. We yeah. have a spring formal, a prom, if you will. Uh, we have options for uh, graduation ceremonies. Um, oh, that's awesome. We have just awesome. about any and everything you can think of that a public school student can participate in, we have here. We have an awesome orchestra and band out of the metro area. We're even trying to get one going up in our Lincoln County, out where I live. Um, so by taking kids out of public school, you're not going to miss those activities. They're, they're readily available all over. Yeah, because, I mean, I've heard that before about, oh, well, homeschoolers don't have any social life. Well, that's, that's a farce. That is. That's, that's a farce. Um, Helen from Australia. I have a son with... I can't read it. With ASD, ASD. and an intellectual impairment. <laughs> graduated from special school, unable to read and no math skills. Oh, my goodness. The main reason I sent him there was for the specialty help. Yeah. Is there a curriculum that I can tap into to help my boy while I homeschool my, my grade 7 child? Um, how old is this boy? Are we talking? How old is he, old is is he, he Helen? Grade, grade 7? Um. There's a lot of uh, manipulative uh, curriculums out there that I would suggest using because if he's not verbal, that's a great way to do it. Also, I have a three-year-old who's almost completely nonverbal, and so we've had to move on. He can hear fine. He's not deaf. Um, we're not really sure what all he, he's adopted. We don't really sure know what all his um, disability is, I guess you could say, but he's learning sign language, and so he's now moving from sign language to learning words that sign language can, you know, um, match up to. So if we get him to say chicken, then he can point to a chicken and he's seeing the chicken. And now our next step will be the word chicken. And so that may be the only type of reading he gets with his disability, but he will eventually be able to learn to pair up that word with other ones. He's how old? 17. 17? 17. Okay. So, um, when Joey was having a hard time learning to read, we used read, write, and spell. For him, he was older. It worked really well with him. You could try that one. Um, with math, I think make it real life. You know, don't use a textbook necessarily. You know, having count things, having do the, you know, get, estimate how much your grocery bills are. Just go to those different angles and see how he does from there. See if he's able to pick it up that way first. Okay, well, I want to, we're going to shift gears for a minute, okay? Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. I want to talk about the food we eat. Hey, Jackie. Uh, let's see. Hey, Cheryl. 
Hey, man. Oh, there's my Amanda girl. Hey, is Dustin with you? Tell Dustin he needs to, to, to watch what we're fixing to do here. <laughs> Susie says, what did I miss? I had a shipment come. What did I miss? What did I miss? Okay. Now, once upon a time, when kids was little, I would, I would make these grilled cheese sandwiches. And one day, Caleb was the one that said, Mom, these are the ultimate. And I said, well, that's what it's going to be. So these are the ultimate grilled cheese sandwiches. Now, if you notice, this really pretty, really pretty mm. loaf of bread. Do you notice that? Mm. <sighs> okay, so what we're going to do we're not going to cut the bread traditionally like this. No, we're going to make some monster sandwiches. That's what we're going to make today. So I'm going to cut off the edge because the edge is always something that I can. And all this bread, I know y'all are not going to believe this, but it was made from scratch. But let me tell y'all something about making from scratch. What I used to be able to do Look at this slice of bread right here, Tammy. Look at that. Look at look at the oh, texture. So Where's my camera at, producer, that I can... Which one can I show? This one? Can y'all see the... Look at that texture. Ooh. Is that not gorgeous? Yeah. Oh, my... Y'all want to bite? Here, right there. Y'all want to bite right sure, there? Bring it closer. Yeah, it's really... <laughs> hey, Tammy, you want to bite? <laughs> um, uh... Let me tell y'all something. Okay, so once upon a time, and I say that a lot because it was once upon a time, many years ago, I was able to knead the bread, do all the stuff by hand. But, you know, I had Arthur come and visit me, and now my hands don't want to do that as well. So let me tell you something. What you need to do is get you a bread maker. Don't bake your bread in the bread maker, but use the bread maker to, to mix up your, your, your bread. And then pull it out, put it in a pan, and bake it. Um, it's still from scratch. You can put it in the bread maker, walk away for an hour and a half, and put it on the dough cycle, and then, you know, you're good. So that's what I did, because I can't knead bread like I used to. So my hands just won't let me. So, get you a bread maker. My daughter just got one for Christmas, and she's already, I think she's just about burned it out by now. Okay, so we're going to slice this. Notice we're slicing it the long way. We're not slicing it the traditional way. Oh, my goodness, look at that slice of bread. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we're going to... Woo! Sorry about that, guys. Did that come through the microphone real loud? Okay. So let me tell you about these sandwiches. Of course, it's fresh baked bread from scratch. Then you want to fry you up some bacon. Then, I did, yes. <laughs> did y'all hear her say that? Yes, bacon. And then you want to grill you some onions. That's what I was just doing as we were crying. But yes, grill you up. And don't be stingy with the onions, folks. I mean, come on, really. Don't salt your onions but, but when you're, you're frying them up. But fry you up some onions. You want to get three kinds of cheese. You want to get you some Swiss cheese. You want to get you some cheddar cheese. Don't buy the processed mess. No. Do not make this sandwich with processed mess, okay? And you want to get some provolone cheese. Oh, man. Oh, my Lord. It sounded so good already. Okay, so then... Yes, Barbara, you're right. I did pick the right night. 
Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Donna. The KitchenAid does need your bread real well. Yes, it does. Um, but see, the thing of it is, and, and I understand, just like with my daughter, she's in nursing school, and so she, she, yeah, Cheryl, I said bacon, and and uh, she doesn't have. It's easier for her just to pop the ingredients in the bread maker and turn it on and go. And then when it beeps, she comes back and does her thing. So, yeah, I mean, the KitchenAid is amazing. I've got one right over here. So, the, the I, I, am I sliding this? I didn't, I didn't want to scare you or anything, you know. But, um, <laughs> but um, if you have time... And you can stand right there with your KitchenAid. Yeah, absolutely, by all means. That, that's the best kneader in the world. But if you don't have the time, it, get your bread machine. You know what? They got them down at Salvation Army. Five dollar. Five dollar. Yep, five dollar. Okay, so uh, provolone, no plastic cheese. You're right, <laughs> Shelly, no plastic cheese. No, if you make my sandwich, do not use plastic cheese okay all right now is this not is this not gonna be one heck of a sandwich okay so coming from the south we have Duke's where'd it go there it is right there we have Duke's mayonnaise now, is that what you have to use all the time? Absolutely. No, 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 not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. If, if you can't find Duke's, find your favorite mayonnaise. Ours just happens to be Duke's because I can't get Deep South from the Dixie store anymore because I don't live anywhere near a Dixie store. So what we're going to do, first off, we're going to turn, turn our griddle back on. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Turn your griddle on. How's everybody doing? Are we having a good time? Yeah. Are we having a good time? Duke's in the house. That's right, honey. That's right. Um, yeah, Shelly said that's the cheese in the plastic wrapper in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Oh, Lord, that stuff is not... I, I think somewhere in the Bible. Some, <laughs> somewhere, I, Peggy's fixing to get me on this one, too. <laughs> I know that. Somewhere in the Bible it says you can't you can't eat that cheese in that plastic wrap. Somewhere. I think it's in one of the 15 commandments. <laughs> is that what it was? Probably not. Peggy is fixing to get me. Law, she's fixing to get me. I know she is. I can feel it. Peggy, I can feel you getting fixing to get me. Okay, so we're going. Don't be stingy with the mayonnaise. Okay? And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but there ain't one ounce of butter out here. There ain't one ounce of butter out here. Okay, so we're going to get that mayonnaise, and we're going to cover that up, and we're going to slap that down on that griddle. It's getting good, girl. It's getting yes, good up in is. here now, mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Uh-huh. How many of these you want to take home with you? How many can I take home with you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we're going to slap this on there. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Don't be stingy <laughs> with the mayonnaise. Watch your core, don't be stingy with the mayonnaise. Okay, we're going to slap that one down there, right there. Now, now, let's see. Watch out, it's in the book of Jan. I, I know! I know, Peggy, it's in the book of Jan. I wish somebody would li I'm glad you listened to me. That's good. Okay, so we're going to take, and we're going to put our provolone right here like this okay then we're going to take us some slices of mater i don't know where y'all came from but i came from the south and it's not a tomato it's a mater okay look at that look at that look at that look at that oh my goodness is it not getting gooder and gooder now y'all gonna need to be making some of these because i want to see Oh, Carol is already asking if you deliver. <laughs> See you, you're really oh, close, Oh, my <laughs> goodness gracious. Carol is already asking. Okay, so now we're going to take us a little bit of the salt and pepper. Here 
You know what I need to be doing is doing two at a time. Here we go. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Maddie. Got our maters going on there. Mater. Mater. Now, if y'all have any more questions for Tammy, she ain't done. So, y'all just keep, start putting your questions out there. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to drop us a little salt here. I didn't pepper this one. Let's put us a little bit of pepper there. And let's put us some cheddar cheese. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to put us some cheddar cheese right here. Is this looking good to y'all yet? Okay, we make monster sandwiches. See, my kids are big. You can see they go big or go home. Okay, so now I have my gloves on. So now we're going to take some of these hot onions. <laughs> some, some of these hot onions. And we're gonna put these hot onions right on top. Is this looking good? They're very good. Is this looking good? Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I heard you laughing your lips over there. I don't know. <laughs> She's like, oh Lord, give me some of these. Okay, look at this. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at these sandwiches. Have mercy. Have mercy. Then. Folks, we got bacon. We got bacon. Bacon in the house. Bacon in the house. Mm, 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 mm. Can't go wrong with bacon. Mm, mm. So then, after we put the bacon on there, Watch what we're going to do. We're going to lay us some Swiss cheese down now. Mm. So did y'all count? We got three mm. different kinds of mm. cheese on this monster ultimate grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. Three different kinds, y'all. Have y'all made one like this recently? Mm -mm. Okay. Now we're going to take one more of these big honking pieces of bread. And we're going to slather that up with some Duke's mayonnaise again. Oh my goodness. You know, I don't even want to, to think about how many calories, okay? <laughs> this isn't a thing of calories. This is a thing of, of comfort food, you know? You can't measure calories with comfort food. I mean, come on, come on. Okay, and we're slathering that side up. Oh my Lord, have mercy. Okay, y'all don't forget to write your questions down because I'm over here just making me up some grilled cheese sandwiches. Look at this. Woo, doggies. Now that right there, I don't care who you are. That's one heck of a sandwich. That is one big sandwich. Uh, that's a sandwich. Uh. Jackie, you like this sandwich, honey? Is it looking good to you? Jackie says road trip to Jan. Jan's in trouble. <laughs> All right, now, when we have a sandwich this big, we can't play around with the spatula. That's just bottom line. You don't play with the spatula. We have to pull out the big guns of the big spatula. Sorry, but I'm not supposed to say that. Okay. <laughs> I tend to say things that I'm not supposed to say. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's toasting up so pretty. We're gonna turn that heat up just a little bit more so we can get that all toasted in there. Yes, yes, yes. Sandwich girl, right there. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, that's wow. a sandwich. We're gonna let that sit mm -hmm. right there for a minute, and we're gonna let that do its thing. And now we're gonna talk about the the tomato soup. All right. Now, the recipe is gonna be in my ebook. I'm just gonna tell you. But let me tell you how I made it. So, 
I got eight pounds of Roma tomatoes and I chopped them up. I put them in a pot with some chicken broth, low sodium. Make sure it's low sodium. I put some, I sliced me up an onion and I boiled those maters until the, the onions was, you could see through them. And I boiled them and boiled, and then, then, and you guys might want to consider, I don't want to get hung up over here. <laughs> you guys might want to consider, I don't know if y'all, does anybody know, okay, I want to see. Okay. Oh no, Helen, her satellite dropped out. Oh no. No, no, no. Are you back with us, Helen? That's a long haul from Australia. <laughs> I hope they got those. I hope they got that bridge ready, cause we might have to come get you. Okay. The um, food mill. Is anybody? Is anybody? Uh, yeah, Fred's here. He's he's here. He's done got up close and personal with Tammy tonight. <laughs> he wanted to talk to her real close. He knew that she was his friend. So here is a food mill. Now, we are going to be canning this summer. I'm going to, you know, the veggies that, that we get in our garden, we're going to be canning this summer. So I would encourage you to get one of these because we're going to be using the hound out of it this summer while we're canning. Um, we're going to make our own ketchup, y'all. We're going to, yeah, we're going there. Okay. So. When when you get your, your tomatoes done, you put it down here in this food mill and you just go round and round and it smushes out all the good stuff and leaves the leaves the uh, peelings all in here. I couldn't think of what I was trying to say. Yeah, so that's what the food mill does and you get everything out. Same thing with berries. If you want to make some blackberry uh, jam or anything like that and you don't want the seeds in it, you're going to use this. Same thing with raspberries. If you don't want the seeds in something, you're going to use your food mill and it's going to get all those out. Uh, Megan says she's never seen a food mill. Have you never seen a food mill? I haven't either. Okay. Well, you're mm. with Tammy. Tammy's never seen a food right. mill neither. So, yeah, Cheryl, we're doing tomato soup too. So, get you one of these guys because we're going to be canning this summer. Okay? And this is a great investment and you need it. Okay, we can do it. You can do more than just canning, but still. Okay. It's the same thing like if like if you're making fresh pumpkin pie. Um, fresh pumpkin pie. You ever heard of that? Um, instead of going and buying the um, the canned stuff, you cook your pumpkin and put it in the food mill. And it just and it comes right out just pureed. That's exactly what happens. Um, Megan, to be honest with you, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Aaron, honey, you stick with me and I will teach you how to do some canning sugar, babe. I will teach you how to do some canning. Um, my mama taught me how, boy, this sandwich is doing good. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. That's oh delicious. my goodness gracious. Okay, so y'all got your uh, you getting your questions together for for Tammy? Let's see. You have some, Helen? Yeah. <laughs> Jackie says, "Ever consider living in Kentucky?" Jackie, I don't know where as Peggy's gonna say yes on that one. <laughs> Peggy, Peggy, Peggy has already said I am not moving anywhere. Um, yes, Helen, <laughs> fresh pumpkin soup. It, that is the best stuff ever. We're going to be making that. We're going to be making that. Um, yeah, Jeannie, we always. I, I instead of using butter, put the put the mayonnaise on there and slap that down there, and it gives you. So such a wonderful flavor in that sandwich because I'm going to let y'all hear Tammy go ooh and ah when I cut this sandwich and she bites into it and goes ooh and ah. That's what she's going to do. That's exactly what she's going to do. So let me see if I can move this. 
Pam, you want to watch the board and see if they're saying anything yeah. that, that you need to answer? Mm. Now, if y'all watched the promo, if y'all saw the promo with my little Fisher, did y'all see the promo so with adorable. Fisher saying his ABCs? And then he was signing his ABCs. And I don't know, I probably just said an ugly word just then. <laughs> I don't know nothing about signing. But Fisher's three years old and he's been learning, he's been signing for goodness gracious forever. Okay, so y'all. I don't know where as, can you see that right there? That right there is some made from scratch tomato soup, cream of tomato soup. This ain't no can. I'm gonna tell y'all, this ain't no, near no can. So this stuff right here, boy, and you know what? So let me tell you what I had to do. Um, before we came on tonight, because I knew that I would be having Tammy test the tomato soup. Mm -hmm. And you know, not everybody has the same taste buds. I mean, come on, you know, so not everybody likes the same thing. I don't understand why nobody wouldn't like this, but you know, hey, it happens. <laughs> so I fixed Tammy a little bit of soup in a cup because I didn't want her to be up here if I handed her a, a cup of tomato soup and it was not to her liking, I didn't want her making no faces and go, eh, like that. No, uh, no, no, you, this is a cooking show. You can't do that. You can't. I thought she was going to lick the cup. It was so, great. so yeah. Okay. So we got, we got us. Oh my goodness. Look at that, Tammy. Oh. Is that not, does that yes. not look wonderful? It is wonderful. Oh my goodness gracious. So what we's going to do, folks. Hey, Barbara says, you finished now. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. You finished. We fixing to eat. Y'all, you finished. But no, Tammy's not finished yet. She's got a whole lot more she can, she's going to say. But look at this. Oh my goodness. And then you're going to dunk that ultimate grilled cheese into this. Oh my heavens. Oh my heavens. Look at that. Here. Here you go. Hold that, darling. My, 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 y'all. <clears throat> now, let me explain something. When you've got this much goody stuff in the middle of your sandwich. You want to take it slow. You don't want to put your griddle on fry baby fry. No. You want to put it on a lower temp. I think I've got mine at yeah right at 200. And you want to grill it slow so that all of that cheese all of that cheese <laughs> Oh, that cheese kind of, you know, because it ain't grilled cheese unless it strings <laughs> for about an hour and a half there, you know. So you've got to let this, you got to let, did I flip this one? I have no idea. Did I flip this one already, y'all? Did I flip this one? I did flip this one. My producer's going, yes, I did. Helen, let's see. He was absolutely gorgeous. We used his son for my James once he found his voice. There, no getting worse. In mm -hmm. now. Oh, Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Helen, you got to grow mm -hmm. your own tomatoes now. Yeah, okay, Megan, thank you. I flipped both of them, good. I'm so glad y'all are watching. <laughs> oh, Jackie says she's building me a cabin next door uh. with a fabulous kitchen. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Somebody's going to be gaining some weight. There goes that no sugar diet. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, now I'm fixing to do something that is against the law. And that's cut right here on my <laughs> on my griddle. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but this sandwich is hot. And I got my hand on it. 
But you know what you can do with these big old sandwiches like this? Look at this. You get three in one, folks. Three in one. What better did Hey, I might even get three, three and a half. Are you okay? You want to sit that down over there? That'd be fine. Look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. I gotta get this. Oh my lord, y'all. Look at that. Where, which camera am I going to? Look at, look at that. <laughs> Do y'all see that right there? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Shelly's saying that I got to come back to her vacant restaurant in Mississippi. So... So, I want to thank y'all. First off, I want to thank Tammy for uh, for being here tonight. Um, I'm really, 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 really thrilled that she would come and share her knowledge, her vast amount of knowledge with you guys because the homeschooling issue is is I mean it, it's it's something that that well we don't have children at home to school anymore but even with our grandchildren so homeschooling is is something for you guys to really think about so while while uh while my sandwiches are finishing up I want to show y'all something I got a goodie box this week. Look what I got. A pillowcase. An Andy Griffith pillowcase. Oh my goodness. And let's see, I think Cheryl. You think I can do this? You think I can do this, Tammy? You think I can do this? Cheryl, are you still here? Oh, good night, Aria. Tutu loves you, baby. Cheryl, are you still here? Is Ingrid here? I haven't seen Ingrid. Is Ingrid here? Okay. Since there are no cameras to show my feet, I did post the other day the ultimate flamingo purchase that I have. Actually, my husband did it. Can y'all see that right there? <laughs> Do y'all see my flamingos? Ain't they cute? Oh my gosh! Cheryl, look. There they are, right there. Right there. See them? That's my flamingo. I am a flamingo fanatic. So, yes, there's my... There's my... Um, I do want to talk about um, you and me. You and me designs. Um, Dina. That girl is, is, is crazy talented. She has, like I say, she's designed my logo. She will design logos. She is, the amount of talent that this, this girl has is phenomenal. Um, so, if you get a chance to check her out, check out You and Me Designs. And she also does printables, youandmeprintables.com. And then we have Weavers. Weaver's Department Store. Everybody, anybody know of An the Andy Griffith Show? Yeah, you think? Um, Weaver's Department Store was on the Andy Griffith Show. Well, our good friends Alan and Jan Newsom run the online Weaver's Department Store. That's where the pillowcase came from. They have shirts, y'all. They have shirts. Look at this. 
Mayberry shirt. Ain't that cool? Floyd's Barbershop. I know y'all know Floyd's Barbershop. This one is Barney. He says, you're not talking to a jerk, you know. I think if y'all if y'all remember that, you'll re you'll remember that episode, okay? And then, of course, I have the Andy the the whistling opening from the Andy Griffith show. I have it on my phone, so anytime I get a text or a notification, it's that whistle that comes along, and I dearly love. It. We was in Taco Bell the other night. Honest to goodness, we was in Taco Bell, and. Uh, I think it was, I, I got a, I got a notification, and I noticed this guy standing right beside me. He starts looking around, and I mean, it's a long notification. I mean, it goes just about through the whole thing, and he says, so he was up at the drink counter, and I walked up to get my water, and my notification goes off again. And he looked at me, he said, most people don't know who that is. He said, well, I just heard that I was looking around for a TV. I said, heck yeah, buddy, there you go. So this one says, go ahead, you know you want to whistle. I love these shirts. These shirts, Weavers, Weavers.com, WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Okay, so let me see. What kind of sandwiches are those? Those are uh, Chef Chan's ultimate grilled cheese sandwiches. No, Tanya, I have not been to the Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, but I may, I'm making plans to go. Making plans to go. It's every September. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Lako Lakota Rose? You know her, Lakota? She said, love you, Tammy. Love you too, Tina. Love you too, Tina, she said. Um, all right, guys, listen. It was great to be here with y'all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for your participation. Um, Greg, I have no chocolate tonight. Thank you, dear. I have the ultimate grilled cheese sandwich and homemade tomato soup. Sorry, sorry. And, and I can't ship either one of those. It wouldn't be no good. So, um, join us back here next week. We are going to do some Easter stuff next week. We're going we're gonna to start getting prepped because Easter's right around the corner. And so, we're going to have some Easter stuff. Now, um, Barbara says, thank you, Tammy. Yes, we do want to thank we do want to thank Tammy for being here tonight. Um, we want to thank you guys for being here. Um, remember, uh, on last Sunday we were in church and the pastor said something. He <laughs> he said something and it really stuck with me. He said, "Be genuine, be a genuine person because there's too many fakers out there. Mm -hmm. So be genuine. So that's what I leave you with tonight. Be a blessing. Be genuine." Be, be what God would have you be and uh, enjoy the week. Meet us right back here next Tuesday night at my kitchen in Oklahoma and we'll have some Easter stuff ready for you. God bless you. I'll have a beautiful, beautiful week and we're fixing to eat us some ultimate grilled cheese and some tomato soup. Take care. We'll see you next week. That It means good luck for one year. I've also heard that it means that next year you're the one that's got to have the party. So the party is up to you next year. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Some of you avid Mardi Gras folks, maybe y'all can correct me on that in the comments or let me know. Okay, here we go. Shelly, you should know about the Mardi Gras stuff, so let me know if I'm telling it right or which one's right or if both are right or
Now there are some folks that will go ahead and color their their icing instead of uh what where do we go now? We go yellow. Yes, Debbie, I will post the recipe, hun. Um They color their icing instead of putting the sugars on there. I just think the sugars are kind of fun myself. And you can put as much or as little as you want. That's up to you. This is really good. I guess all my grandbabies have gone to bed by now. I love my grandbabies. Okay, and the last color we have is, Donna, I don't know about the history of the King Cake Baby. Maybe someone that's on here that, that has more knowledge of the whole King Cake Mardi Gras thing can, can tell you. I have no idea. I really don't. Oopsie. I really don't. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Well, I've made a mess, y'all. I declare. I make a mess every time you turn around. Every time. Here I am. I tell my daughter, don't make a mess, but look what her mama's doing. Okay, there's one. Just pull that out from underneath very gently. And look what we have. We have a king cake. Um, I am so glad you guys stuck it out and stayed with me through the, the interruptions and the bad Facebook connections and all that. Um, yeah, Barbara, the more feeling the better. 